for the first time ever, the Arca Menard Series heads to the state of Arizona for the General Tire 150 at Phoenix Raceway on March 6th. Well, the guests ready. We got a pretty big guest coming along the way here. Join us on the inside lane. She's a pro mod kart champion, the 2018 Arco West Rookie of the Year, and the 2020 runner-up in the Daytona Lucas Oil 200. Driving the DGR Crosley, number four Ford Fusion from Temecula, California, it's Haley Deegan. Haley, thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem. That was one of the most hyped intros I've ever had. <laughs> hey, well, I, th I think that you're going to have a few more intros come up through the years, so I'm, I'm glad I'm towards the top early, but, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where I know that I have to follow up something big. That's the highs and lows of being famous, you know. Some days there's a new Shelby Mustang just hanging out in your driveway. Other days you have to deal with people <laughs> like me and Barrel Boy, so, you know, highs and lows, but y you're driving that to Phoenix, right? Yes, I actually am. I'm, I'm bringing one of my friends with me. Uh, my best friend, he's going to come to the race. He's planning on coming anyway. And so I'm like, Dad, you can drive the motor home there. I was like, me and my friend are going to take on my thing. <laughs> Perfect. It's, it's brand new. you got to kind of wear, wear the tires out a little bit, get rolling, right? Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely have already. <laughs> so you got a major advantage when you come to Phoenix over a lot of the guys in the Arkham Menard series because you've already been here before. You finished fourth in November in the Arca West race. What can you take from that race with it not being the complete same car and take that into the general tire 150? Yeah, the old k and cars from last year and the Arc cars, they're pretty close now, especially um, with the rules packages and everything that they've kind of uh, changed around to mess the cars better. Um, so it's going to be pretty similar, which I'm excited about, so it'll just be more in my favor, even though, yeah, no matter what, it's going to be difficult, but uh, it's always nice to have a little step ahead, uh, especially having a little bit of experience there, racing experience, and especially having time on the sim, and just kind of doing all my homework before the race to be as prepared as possible so we get a good finish. And so full season of ARCA here, it's a longer schedule than you've really done in stock cars before. How do you adjust to attack a season like this? I think I'm really excited because this is a season I've kind of been wanting. Um, my kind of past stock car career is I want to be racing as much as possible. And I know there's about 20 races this season just in the ARCA series. And so it's definitely going to help me in my development and making me a better driver because right now I'm at the development stage. I'm trying to get my foundation down for the future when we keep moving up the ranks. And one of your biggest supporters is one of the godfathers of freestyle motocross. He also happens to though be your father as well. Brian Deegan, yes. when you're here in Phoenix, you know, he's out with a scanner on pit road during practice. He's popping in, uh, his head in the cockpit when you pull into the garage. How has Brian helped you out in your transitions from the dirt into stock cars? So what we call dad, a dad like that in the motor role is a mini dad. So <laughs> it's pretty much they become driver coach, spotter, uh, trainer. It's just he's all around kind of my go-to guy for everything in life. And he's been there with me since day one racing, been supporting me. And he's never pushed me to do anything I didn't want to do. When it comes to racing, everything that I've done is what I've wanted to do. And I've pushed myself. And he just, what he does is, he kind of gets behind me and supports me with whatever I need and as much as he can. And so has that role kind of had to dwindle down a little bit? I know that he uh, he tried not to be on the radio at Daytona, but he ended up being on the radio. Has he kind of had to step back just a little bit and, and be like, okay, big team now, Arc Menard Series, but obviously he's still going to be right there with you the whole way. Yeah, that's the thing. The nice thing about having a dad that races, he understands when to step back and when to be involved and when he needs to be involved and not. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, even at Daytona for the IMSA race, he was on the radio there too, which I want him on the radio because there's not really spotters there. And I'm used to having a spotter ever since I grew up racing. So I had him hop on the radio to clear me a few times, but he's definitely, he knows what to do. And that's the nice thing. Speaking of growing up, you grew up on the dirt road courses, if you will, Lucas Oil Off-Road Truck Series. Can you take anything, even if it's just stuff like the mindset or the attitude inside the car, and take that into racing an ARCA car? Yeah, for sure. I think the aggression level is so high in off-road racing and it's such an intense sport. Uh, that's such an intense type of racing. And you're kind of just fully pinned for 30 minutes straight, and it's all kind of hell breaks loose. <laughs> so... I'm used to that aggressive racing, and it all it does is help me in stock cars. And I want to go back to Daytona again, because I think that you might have had the most fun of anyone Daytona 500 weekend, and you weren't even racing. 
but you got President Donald Trump to sign your helmet after gaining some help on Twitter. Can you just take me through that adventure from tweeting that goal and then the reality of it actually happening at Daytona? Yes, I actually talked to Chip, the president of Daytona, and I was like, hey, I was like, heard Trump's coming here. Like, I want to get my helmet signed. We were at the Lisa Candy France kind of uh, little party dinner. And so he uh, he kind of started saying that up, and then I tweeted about it. Because I was like, okay, there's like probably like 50-50 chance of it happening right now. And so I tweeted about it, and then Donald Trump Jr. DM me on Twitter, and we got it all figured out, so that was pretty cool. All right, before I let you go, i got to do a segment I call Quick Time, some rapid-fire questions. Looking for some rapid-fire answers okay. in return. Some of these are factual, but some of these are just your opinion. You ready to set Quick Time, Haley? Yes, I'm ready. All right, first one, your favorite track to race at regardless of vehicle. And, man, you you, you got a lot to choose from. <laughs> I really like the restarts at Phoenix, but I think racing-wise, Bristol's the funnest. That would be a fun place to go. Speaking of, you know, short mm -hmm. tracks, uh, your dad, Brian, did try to get into some of the NASCAR world. He did do a little bit of stock car racing, including his first super late mile race at Irwindale. Where did he finish? Uh, was it fifth? Almost halfway there. It was a top ten, but it was tenth. It was. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh... What's your best finish at Irwindale, Haley? At Irwindale? Yeah. I think I've got maybe, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> I think top five. You've been there a couple know. times. I, I, uh -uh, I don't even remember now. <laughs> I've made so many races. I, I can't even remember anymore. Well, probably a little bit better than 10th, I think, right? I, I, it's definitely better than 10th. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I need some eye racing help. Gain on to the Pro 2s on eye racing. Probably my biggest issue is going through the corners, letting that actually whip around. What is some help that you can give some of us going from an opposite you oval to dirt uh, when it comes to the pro twos? Maybe just some mindset tricks. I'd say mindset, just fully pinned the whole time. It's kind of the harder you drive into the corners, the faster you go. Um, when it comes to eye racing, and even more relatable in off-road racing is kind of the old Doc Hudson from Cars <laughs> movie, right to go left type stuff. My dad, I swear, the most used word was pendulum my entire career of off-road racing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got one more for you. You switched to Ford this year. As ARCA visits Phoenix for the first time, Ford won the first ever NASCAR National Touring Series race at Phoenix. Name that driver. Mm -hmm. uh, give man. you a couple hints. What 1998. 1998. Former Cup champion. A former cup champion. Oh, why don't I know this? Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, wait. Ah, man. Oh, wait, wait, can I get like some options? Some options. You know what? I think I will. Let me, because I don't want to make it too easy. So let's see what the top five that day was. Your top five options are Bill Elliott, Davey Allison, Terry Labonte, Alan Kowicki, and Rusty Wallace. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> why, uh, man. And three of those are Fords, too, so it's not an easy one. <laughs> wait, wait, can you say it one more time? Terry Labonte, Davey Allison, Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki, and Rusty Wallace. The Ford to win the first ever NASCAR National Touring event at Phoenix Raceway, the Checker 500. Hmm. God, I don't. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I don't think it was Alan Quickie. Um. What was the last one you said? The last one was Rusty Wallace. Was it Rusty Wallace? <laughs> no, nope, he was fifth. That's why I called him last. It no, was sorry. Alan Kowicki, Haley. Oh, what? <laughs> Alan Kowicki <laughs> driving up from 21st in his Ford to win the <laughs> inaugural NASCAR Winston Cup Series race in 1988. You have a chance to be the second ever Ford driver to win an inaugural national touring event yeah. at Phoenix Raceway to put your name with Alan Kowicki. So that's pretty good company, I think. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll try for that one. <laughs> All right, Haley. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us here on the Inside Lane. One of the most fun drivers in the garage area. Don't lose sight of that personality, that zest for life that you got, no matter however much someone tells you it's not cool or something like that. One of the most fun drivers out in the garage. Haley, thank you again for your thank time. You. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me. Arkham and Art Series visits Phoenix Raceway for the first time March 6th for the General Tire 150. Be sure to keep it at sports360az.com for all your racing updates.